Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a very pleasant night to you, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to the game that sucks up all our money. And time. And lives at this point. It's Vega Conflict, and as you know, we have a new vessel in the game. It's kind of the point of this video going live at this point, because at the same time, the event has started, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we do anything like that, there are a few things I want to point out over here, as you can probably see. We have a... 10th year anniversary thing going on right now in Vega, and right now you can hop in and claim some pre-fitted elite stuff, tokens, and then from a downtime in the past couple days, you can also get some more tokens, so it's the perfect time to grab it because it's a brand new event going on, you may want the repairs, the repair tokens just in case things don't work out in your favor. But with that all out of the way and that mentioned, let's get on to the main event. This is the Magistrate. It's a retro sim vessel and it starts with a 1 hour 45 minute repair time, has an effective range of 0 to 5,500, it has 450,000 hit points, it has a maximum mass at Mark 1 at, of 19,000 tons, it has a cargo capacity at Mark 1 of 3,500,000 tons, it has a forward speed of 550 meters per second, a rotation speed of 30 degrees per second, and a strafe speed of 300 meters per second. And it has an insector speed of 600 astronomical units per hour. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the modifiers real quick. We'll take a look at the integrated reflex system once I've gone over all the other stats, and then we'll look at the resistances last after the integrated reflex. So, right off the bat, it's doing 75% more damage against Spectre vessels. It's doing 50% more damage against Astral Barony targets, well, vessels in general. Any armor you equip on it will automatically have a 130% increase, so say you have 100,000 hit points, you'll now have 230,000 hit points. It's a pathetic attempt when they could just put it in the actual armor itself, but that's a gripe for another video, not a showcase. It has 50% reduced module damage, 20% reduced weapon mass, 35% reduced armor mass, 25% reduced shield mass, 20% resurgence, and again, all of this is just the Mark 1 stats. I don't think I say that enough, but again, this is all just Mark 1. Uh, it has a shield energy increase of 180% for any shields you, you equip on it. So once again, if you have 100,000 points worth of shielding, it's going to be 280,000 after the buff, well, after the increase. It's got a 5% shield recharge rate at Mark 1, and there's the thing that I hate always right below it. The recharge delay. It can recharge when depleted, though, so offsets it depending on how you want to play. It also does 50% more damage against shielding. Now here comes the real funny thing. The following two only apply to squadrons and drones and has a 50% reduced maximum range for any squadrons or drones you put on it, and if I'm not mistaken, they only get drones at the higher tier. And the reduced projectile range is an odd one, because theoretically all squadrons are point blank. They have to fly out to the target and then they begin to sit on the target and fire on the target. So I believe that they actually made a mistake with putting this the projectile range down there. It was most likely meant to be in the upper section with the rest of the stats. I'll get a better look at it later on when I test it. But let's move on to the integrated re reflex system. Bleh. <laughs> so, we'll take a look at the field and the resistance bonuses when it's in the integrated reflex once we're done going over the base stats. So, it has a 50% trigger threshold, so a very low threshold. It has a 25% charge rate and a 25% defense rate, so you fire, you hit, takes two seconds. You fire, you get hit, at the same time, it'll take one second to enter it. And charge cooldown delay 10 seconds, drain 100% per second, and delay before drain. So you have 15 seconds where it's basically going to be charging, and then drain, and then before the drain. So you have 15 seconds in between combat to get to the next set of vessels. Oh, you're a fault, you're... Yeah, give me a second. 
or you're going to fall out of your integrated reflex system. You're going to fall out of your phase, basically. So what field does it provide? It provides a damage allocation of 75%. Okay, so it's basically just another tank. It's a Titan, but it doesn't say it's a Titan. The big thing is the resistance, though. It gains a 30% energy, 30% kinetic, 30% explosive, 10% alien, 10% blight, and 10% plasma resistance at Mark 1. Let's go take a look at the actual resistances now and see what it actually has to offer, then we'll move on to the weapons. So, actual resistance wise, it has by default at Mark 1 30% spectre resistance, 20% astral barony resistance. 30% alien resistance, 30% plasma resistance, and 30% blight resistance, and 100% alien plasma and blight nebula resistance, because nebulars are essentially useless against everything from tier 8 and up. Well, in some cases. Okay, that's enough going over the vessel. Let's go ahead and let's take a quick look at the weapons, and then I'll let you get on your way, because you either have an event to start, or you just want to stop in to see what the latest tech is. Either way, let's move on. So, looking at the Proto-Vulcan, immediately we, we can see that it definitely hits fairly hard, but looks can be deceiving and I'll wait to hold any judgment off or until after I've had a chance to test it later today, and that'll be for tomorrow's video. But for now, Proto-Vulcan 1. What's it offer? 30,000 damage per second. Weighs 3,000 tons, has a range of 0 to 5,000 meters, has a speed of 5,000 meters per second, so it goes through that in one second flat. That's pretty nice. Piercing of 4, and has no recharge. Okay, so just like the previous weapon, the circumscribed beam that I never talked about, it has no recharge. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at those details real quick. So, for every 3 firing cycles, you'll gain 25% damage per second and you'll cap out at 100%. So after 12 firing cycles, you'll cap out, and you'll maintain that 100% cap for 15 firing cycles. This is a different take on what they normally do with the overcharged stuff, so that's a cool little change. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what the level 2 has. It's overcharged, and we'll go ahead and we'll end it there. So a less than 10% increase in damage, only a 2,000 increase, then a 3,715 ton, so basically standard, everything is all the same. You have a one, you have one more to the piercing value, so instead of four, you have five. Now let's take a look at the overcharge details and see where that differs. Okay, right off the bat, you have twice the damage increase per firing cycle, well, per three firing cycles, so instead of 25, you get 50%. It caps at 150%, and it still lasts for 15 firing cycles definitely going to want to pick up a few level 3s and test them out on the judge and things like that. But, let's go ahead and let's head back to the base and I'll send you all off so you can get on to farming while I finish up with what I have to do for the night before I head to bed. So, we went over everything I wanted to talk about. We're getting towards the 9 minute marks. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to call it here for the video. <sighs> it's good to be back, to say the least. But for now, be safe out there, happy hunting, and especially good luck in the event, and I'll see you all next time.